Welcome to another portrait painting video. My name is Yupari, and in this week's video, I'm going to guide you along the uh, process involved in creating a portrait painting with a strong contrast within light and dark, also known as chiaroscuro, if I can even pronounce that. All right, so we're going to be using flake white, titanium white, burnt umber, alizarin crimson, permanent cadmium red, medium yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, ivory black, and we're working on a regular cotton canvas that has been toned with burnt umber colored oil paint and allowed to dry. And if you want to know exactly what materials I'll be using for this video, including the materials uh, such as the brushes, the oil paint brands, and all that stuff, will be typed in the description box for you. So at any point, uh, feel free to scroll down to the description box and I'll have all that typed up for you. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a large size for Filbert Bristle Brush and we're going to have a pretty loose start. So I'm going to work with Burnt Umber as my drawing color. So with a larger drawing brush uh, we're going to establish roughly where the portrait is going to fit. So let's suppose that the top of the head is about there side of the head is about here. Notice how very simple these lines are. So that's the side of the head and then there's the other side and I'm trying to keep these lines very simple. See how very simplistic we're starting? Now the idea is to get a composition that I like. A composition where I can fit in the entire head just using simple straight lines and angles. Now the shoulder is at a turn. So the shoulder is turned somewhat like this. The center line of the uh, model is somewhat like this, in this kind of direction. Remember the center line is the uh, basically the line running along the center of the head giving us the turn and the tilt, or should I say the turn and the tip. Now for the tilt we're going to go ahead and look at the angle of the eyes and again we're going to start off really simple really simplistic and uh, really loose with this start we're going to be we're going we're not going to be afraid for uh, any of this painting really so we're going to start off with a very brave and bold brush I'm going to very quickly uh, go in and establish where the simplistic darks are going to be the simple shapes of light and dark so here already we have a little indication now for the side plane of the face. Very simple and easy. Let's block in this dark. I want to use a little more mineral spirits and I don't want to use too much mineral spirits. And so it's an art in itself knowing how much mineral spirits to use. So let's look at the bottom now. So the bottom of the face might be about there. Moving the nose a little bit down. Now the idea is uh, simplicity, keeping these shapes simple and easy to work with. Do not be afraid of the paint. Now here's the mouth. Most likely I'm going to go into all of this and make it even more specific, but it's going to start off like this. Very loose and simple, very almost like a robot. Now with using a little piece of paper towel, I'm starting to carve a little bit. Don't want to do too much uh, just yet. So now let's look at the ears. So the little ear fits there. Follow along the other side. The other ear fits there. Now back into the outside shape. Let's go ahead and block in this little shape here. Very nice and simple. The outside shape comes into about there. That comes about there. I want to make sure that I have a composition that I like. Now let's go ahead and reassess this angle. Um, I'm going to hold out a brush and look at my model. So I'm pretty sure that this is almost level. Now I'm doing this by eye. So I'm giving my eye a chance uh, to, to decide where things are going to fit and how they're going to fit in relation to one another. So now we're getting 
a little more specificities specificity so pardon me so I'm trying to basically observe the large placement of the head and I'm allowing myself the opportunity to make as many mistakes as I need to make now in painting I am of the philosophy that yeah mistakes can happen uh, but let's think about a mistake as a stepping stone to success I'd rather start off with a big mess sometimes and uh, just carve away at that large mess and um, make something out of it and that's just a physical uh, thing like it's a physical interaction that you have with the canvas with the model sometimes with the paint just it's a very physical process and it's a lot of fun I mean other sometimes I like to just sit there and do a very finished very refined graphite drawing or charcoal drawing and then transferring it I work that way too uh, I, I tend to consider myself somewhat of an explorer of technique but sometimes like with this start I really just wanna get in there and figure out just simple large shapes now I don't always work this way alright so the ear is gonna come out to about there let's cut this back a little bit and my priority for right now my priority is the composition that's what I'm prioritizing let's go ahead and just put in a little shape here for where the collar is gonna fit very simple there collar is gonna go right about there and again the angle of the shoulder let's look at this outside shape this comes out now this is almost straight but it's still at a pretty straight it, it's almost straight but it's at a pretty slight angle so simple straight lines and angles is the way that I'm approaching this now again the whole center line has kind of shifted and that's good keeping this we're keeping this organic we're keeping this workable the nose now might be there maybe it is maybe it isn't I don't know yet making a mark standing back trying to evaluate it so I'm gonna go ahead and just unify this whole dark shape and then I'm gonna subtract for the mouth again I'm not afraid of what this painting looks like right now again we're applying a very bold very brave brush to this now let's see shape of the mouth right about there who knows the mouth might be there might not be there start with something alright now let's go ahead just mask that in again so this shape comes out a little bit more like that there we go have fun with it have fun with these shapes Now perhaps the side of the head comes out a little more in this direction. Now let's not forget about the tilt. Now the, the model is tilting down a little bit, so he's looking down. So I'm going to be seeing a little bit more of this region of his skull. So that being said, let's go ahead and just move this down. And this is true life. I mean, this is the reality of painting sometimes you nail it the first try and all of the shapes just fit in quite nicely now sometimes that's the case oftentimes like uh, with this start we're gonna be pushing things around and that's okay now this comes out to about there again stand back Alright, now let's go ahead and look at the back side of the skull. 
out to about there. And that's all right for the placement of the head. Remember, the specificity will be built on top of this. Just want to get composition that I like with simple and abstract shapes. All right, so now the next thing I'm going to do is mix up a strong light color that I'm going to use uh, for a drawing color. So I'm going to use another size for Filbert, and I'm going to be uh, making a combination of the yellow ochre, cadmium, red, medium, flake white. Now flake white is a pretty good white to uh, raise the value up a little bit and still maintain the integrity of your color. See how I'm using a little bit of flake white and how it's not really doing too much? Now, if you want to raise the value up even more, there's titanium white. Watch this. With just a tiny bit of titanium white, look how it just gets so bright. We don't always want that, uh, but for this purpose here, I do want to raise the value up a little bit more without using too much paint just yet. And so, uh, that was a good little uh, demonstration of flake white versus titanium white, I think. So this is going to be a little drawing color. And so let's go ahead and make these little light and dark shapes now uh, for the forehead. Now remember, this is a drawing color, and we're going to be uh, kind of exaggerating light and dark, applying uh, more of a chiaroscuro Chiaroscuro. Man, I don't even know. I looked up how to pronounce it. Chiaroscuro. Well, if you know how to pronounce it properly, uh, go ahead and correct me if you'd like in the comment section. But for practical purposes, let's just call this light and dark. Just light and dark. So now there's going to be See, I'm applying a little less pressure here. I'm going to apply a little more pressure down here. And I'm just trying to draw with this light. Just trying to draw. A little more dark shape down there. And let's go ahead and we'll put in the bulb of the nose coming down perhaps about there going back to the light color let's go ahead and just move that in there there we go something like that and there's even a little bit of light right here yet it's still pretty dark down here Uh, so we're working from general to specific. Sometimes you'll see me try and get really specific uh, really early on, but I'm leaving myself a lot of room uh, to, to interpret here. So we're going to be using just two colors primarily. The burnt umber drawing color and the uh, little flesh tone that we mixed up. Again, that flesh tone consists of, let's go ahead and remix it. So, yellow ochre, cadmium red medium, a little bit of flake white, and then the titanium white. Let's throw in a little bit of burnt umber just to neutralize it a tiny bit. And there you have it. This comes down a little further like this. This comes out to about here. And this goes over there. Switching back to the paper towel. I'm going to go ahead and just off with his ear. I'm going to go chop this off. And I'm just doing this just to look at the outside shape yet again. Don't worry. It's just paint. I'll give him his ear back. I promise. About here. 
probably about there. Have fun with it. You definitely want to have fun with this. All right, so this shape actually comes in a little bit more like this. And it comes out there. I'm gonna stand back. Oof. Yeah, after standing back, um, I yeah, it's time to get specific. So let's spend a little while with just these simple shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead, guess what? I'm gonna use my palette knife now to mix this flesh color because I don't feel like constantly having to mix this. Maybe you do, but I don't. So back to the flake white again. Let's just go ahead and mix this color and keep it on the side. We're gonna use this to draw. So the burnt umber, let's add a little bit more. There we go. Hopefully that's enough. All right, so let's keep this color on the side. Hopefully that's enough for us. Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a smaller brush. Smaller brush time. Smaller brush for both the light and the dark. Now it's time to really put in the specificity. So now let's let's use a little bit of anatomy to help us out here. So uh, let's start off with the frontal ridge, frontal ridge of the skull. Look at this angle. Yeah, it looks about right. Now let's uh, look at the distance from the uh, forehead, so the frontalis muscle down here. Optically, that looks about right. Now it looks like the trouble is happening with the eye sockets. Uh, so I need to make a little more of a specific shape here. So this comes out to about there. This comes down to about here. Okay. All right, so now we're seeing a little bit of light on the side. This is pretty much the side of the zygomatic because he's looking down. So we're going to see a little bit of zygomatic here. And remember, zygomatic is just a cool way of saying the cheekbones. Here we go, top plane of the cheekbone. Now this comes down to, this comes out to about here. And we're gonna see a little bit more of the side of the forehead here. A little bit more, something about that. Yep, all right, so now uh, with the burnt number again. Let's just go ahead and put this shape over here or the ear. Hey, it actually goes a little higher, a little higher on a horizontal. Let's put that back over here. There we go. Something like that. Now let's go down to the nose. All right, so we have a very predominant dark cast shadow from the nose. So let's paint that in there with the burn number. There we go, something like that. And the bulb of the nose, or sorry, the wing of the nose comes down a little more like that. Now we're really gonna take our time with these shapes. Here we go. Now, optically bouncing my eye back and forth. Now here's where we're gonna run into some trouble. I see that this, there's too much of the side of the face here that's showing. Now remember, all of these decisions and comparisons are being made optically. 
So let's go ahead and subtract a little bit, perhaps subtracting a little bit more than I want to, but that's all right. I'm going to come back in and, of course, build the specificity onto that. This comes out here, just looking at these, basically looking at this whole little negative shape here. All right, so can't forget the zygomatic bone. That looks about right. Let's just throw in a little bit of light here for the eye. A little bit of light there just for fun. We're seeing a little bit of light there. And don't worry, we're going to fix all of that. So this comes out to about here. Who knows? Who knows? All right, so let's just cut this back in a little bit there. Okay. So now back to the nose. I'm seeing a little bit of a shape coming out like that. All right, paint that in there. Very simple. I'm gonna make a little diagonal gesture here. There's a very distinct kind of connection between this angle coming out here and this angle here for the side of the eyebrow. Do they match up? No, they don't. And that's good. That's good. Now let's go ahead and um, actually, speaking of that angle, for some reason this angle in relation to this angle is kind of making me want to look at this angle. This comes down a little bit more. I want to say brave brush it out to about there. Who knows? Somewhere out to about there. And let's suppose there's a little dark shape here. Something like that. Oof. Something like that. All right. Let's just reinforce that dark. Getting carried away with the specifics there. Um, now let's work our way down. See, let's make sure that the center line is still making sense. Here we have a pretty predominant light, so let's use a little bit of titanium white. I did say I would stick only with light and dark here, uh, but hey, there's a little bit of light here, and I kind of want to want to put that in there. So that's the light on the nasal bone, I believe, right about here. And since I put that light in there, might as well put this one. I'm going to have to stop there with all of these values. Just trying to keep it predominantly light and dark. Don't want to get carried away. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just whip the paper towel alone. Just try to take that off my brush. Go back to this brush and uh, let's look at these angles now. So this comes down about there. Yep, it comes down about there. Alright, now let's go ahead and look at the cast shadow. And this comes out a little more like this. So when I apply the brush mark in this kind of direction, I'm doing it because I, uh, I want to eliminate glare. And so making marks in a diagonal fashion helps me do that. Alright, so right there. Yep, following the diagonal for the zygomatic. Alright, so I'm trying to look at this whole shape here. I'm trying to work this whole little side. And so I'm going to use a little fan brush to help with the glare. Now then, uh, facial hair. How do we treat this? I don't know. Let's look at it as a shape first. Shoot, I don't even know. I don't even have to know what I'm painting sometimes. If I just abstract it in my mind as a set of shapes, that can open up a whole world of possibility of different subjects that I can paint. And that's fun.
That's a lot of fun. All right, so let's follow the bulb of the nose. It's kind of pointing right at the middle, uh, the top of the middle of the upper lip. It's almost like you can picture a little ant man here just shooting bow and arrows and there. Lands right about there. When all else fails, just picture little stories. Imagine little stories going on. Say that the bulb of the nose might need to move out like that. So let's do that. Move this out a little bit more. Just like that. Now then, um, we have a little bit of light here for the uh, middle region of the upper lip. I'm going to squint down just to get an idea of these shapes. There is a strong angle here that I'm just not getting. I'm not getting it at all. And I think it's because the mouth might be a little too far out like that. So let's go ahead and just unify the shape and just push that little brush stroke a little bit further out. Push this a little further out as well. Keep your shape simple and easy to work with so that when the time comes to make adjustments, those adjustments are simple and easy to do. Now this comes out to about like that. We're going to brave brush it even though we're using paper towel. Let's brave paper towel it if uh, you'll allow me to say that. All right, that comes out there. Let's see, let's see. There's a very predominant dark here beneath the lower lip there. Something like that. And I see this very well when I'm squinting my eyes and standing back. Squint your eyes and stand back. I tell you it's a secret uh, that many artists have in the way that they see, in the way that they observe nature. They tend to squint and stand back to help eliminate uh, detail that they don't want. All right, this shirt comes out to about there. Not too worried about the shirt though. All right, this comes down a little more like that. All right, now let's look at this angle here. All right, so let's follow the jaw this side over to this side. Here goes out like that. Um, so the little corner of the jaw is also known as the ramus of the jaw. So just think about where that corner, uh, where this angle change takes place. And after looking at that, um, yeah, I see that this shape still needs to come in a little bit, and that's all right. Just push that in there. There you go. No problem at all. Oops. Got to move the brush in this direction. There we go. Let's just unify this whole shape here. Simple and easy is the key word. Keep it simple and easy. And you'll find that it's a lot of fun to work in this way. Now, keep in mind that I'm not trying to copy the image that I'm looking at. Remember, I'm not trying to copy it. I'm trying to interpret it and distill it down into simple shapes. And it's through the observation of these simple shapes that the magic really starts to happen. Now, we're not trying to, again, create a perfect photographic copy. We're not trying to create a photographic rendition of the model. If you think about a simple, uh, let's think about a simple Mr. John Singer Sargent. Uh, he, he didn't really copy what he was looking at. And um, he was very expressive in the way that he portrayed uh, his uh, sitters, his models. Very expressive. And I think that there is a balance between um, kind of photographic looking 
images and expressive images. And I think that if your images, and, and now this is in my opinion, I think that if the images are too photographic, too, uh, I don't want to say digital, but too mechanical looking, um, I just feel like it kind of loses a little bit of, I don't know, I don't know the word here, help me out. A little bit of the humanity, I want to say. Oof, that's a harsh thing to say. Ooh, harsh thing to say. What I'm trying to say is keep your portraits expressive. There's the word. Keep them expressive. Enjoy the process. Don't just cold-bloodedly, though I love cold-blooded reptiles, don't just try to copy what you're looking at. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and stand back and I think I'm going to go ahead and block in a large shape for the background. Let's see, looking for my brushes here. Let's, yeah, let's use this one. So let's just mix onto the painting. So just getting what I want for the background. And let's go ahead and fill in the rest of this value. All right, so I pretty much just used um, ivory black, burnt umber, a little bit of ultramarine blue to block in this shape, uh, this dark shape for the background. The reason being is that, uh, again, I'm trying to reinforce the strong sense of light and dark in this uh, particular style. It's almost like film noir, if you're uh, familiar with uh, film noir cinema. Very strong light and dark. This is also very similar to what uh, Caravaggio would have uh, done in terms of his value schemes. Now Caravaggio was a light years ahead of uh, where I am, but this strong contrast between light and dark uh, seems to be something that he really enjoyed. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is get into the large form modeling of the portrait. And I'm going to use some, uh, let's, let's, let's use the palette knife. So let's use the color that we mixed up there. Um, let's just actually, let's move it over here. All right, so titanium white. So I'm going to observe uh, the forehead. So I'm looking right here. So that is, it looks about like this. Okay, so it's titanium white, yellow ochre, a little bit of cadmium red medium. All right, so that's for the lighter light, and let's just use what's on the palette knife to make it darker. Now we're going to keep working our way down the palette knife, down the palette knife, down the palette with the palette knife, adding more burnt umber for some darker tones, and I'm looking at probably here for this tone. Oof, now after standing back, it's a little too dark. So let's lighten it up. And now with 
Alizarin Crimson Permanent. It's a really good color to tint something red-ish. So I'm going to use a little bit of it on my palette knife. And there you have it, red. Oof! I used a little too much, so huh, kind of contradicted myself there. Now, if I use that much of the cadmium red medium, this would be pretty much bright hot. So to contrast the Alizarin Crimson Permanent, you have your sap green. Sap green, see there you have it. Contrasts very nicely. And when you're mixing with palette knife, really easy to clean off the palette knife. Just use, just use your paper towel and there you go. So a little more of that combination of Alizarin Permanent and Sap Green together will give us a nice little uh, middle tone here. Woof, that's too hot. Too hot. Take it out, take it out. A little bit of, yeah, let's throw in some Ultramarine Blue just for fun there. Back to the Burnt Umber. Burnt Umber is a very good um, coolant for some instances where you get too hot of a color. There you have, that's nice. That'll probably fit somewhere about there. Now we're gonna get even darker with these colors, so let's go ahead and just take what's on the palette knife, mix it with some burnt umber, and there you have it, very simple little value scale. So, what am I gonna do with that value scale? I'm going to get a, uh, hmm. how about this? Let's go back to the size four filbert uh, that I was using for uh, these colors, and let's get um, let's get a size six flat. So this is a size flat. Eh, size flat. This is a size six flat bristle brush. Let's just go ahead and take some of these colors and put in some of our half tones. Now we're in, I would say, the middle stages of the painting. And the middle stages are really the stages in which kind of the magic happens, uh, where the portrait starts to evolve. Hopefully not devolve, but you know what I mean. All right, so I'm gonna use this tone here and follow through with the half tones. And again, I'm painting wet on wet, uh, so the painting is still still wet and not using any medium just yet there is no glimpse of medium just using the paint let's go ahead and fill that in this is a dark light notice how with these simple little half tones uh, we're starting to have an image emerge and hey while we're on it let's go ahead Back to the palette knife and let's get this color, titanium white, burnt umber, seems to be the obvious mixture to me. There we go, titanium white, burnt umber, seems about right. And some of you have been wanting to see this, and uh, oof, I'm using a palette knife, isn't that fun? Using the palette knife to block in that color. Now see there's too much paint there. So I'm subtracting a little bit. Palette knife gives us some nice effects. So there we go. Fits in right there. Pretty neat, isn't it? Now let's take a little bit of this paint off again. And there, let's just toss it there. Nice little light and dark effects. And, uh, hmm. Maybe I'll come back to that. Maybe I won't. Let's, yeah, let's put a little more. So, titanium white burnt umber. Titanium white burnt umber. A little bit more titanium white than burnt umber, but not that much more. Alright, this comes out to about here. Sorry for the sound, palette knife on canvas isn't always the greatest thing to hear. Back to the titanium white. 
And now uh, let's get that angle for the shoulder. Hmm. Probably comes out to about there. Yep, let's suppose it comes out to about there. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Using a palette knife to fill that in. And I know, I know, you want me to do a palette knife painting uh, with portrait, but uh, give me some time to practice that. Uh, I'm going to need to practice that first before trying to do a portrait with palette knife. Drapery, yeah, I can, I can, I can do that kind of with palette knife. Portrait, give me a while to practice that first. All right, back to the flesh tones. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and look at some of the middle tones. So let's go ahead and mix right onto this. Again, with I'm not using any medium, no medium whatsoever. Just the oil paint on the brush. And now we're filling in that tone. Very nice and simple. A little more pinkish. Now here we are on the zygomatic region. And let's go ahead back into this darker tone. There's a little bit of a dark, dark tone right there. There you have it. Very simple. All right, so now we have something going on here. We have some light on the model's uh, hair. Well, how are we going to do that? So let's use a clean brush first. So this is a clean size 6 flat bristle brush. And I'm going to just take the clean and dry brush and just uh, pave, pave way, kind of bulldozing some of this paint off. And oil paint allows you to do that. It's a very forgiving medium. So with the dry brush, I'm just pushing that over. Yep, just pushing it over. And automatically it's starting to create a pretty nice color. I mean this has to be cooler of course, but that's a nice little starting point. Alright, this comes out to about there. Pretty neat. Um, now I'll tell you what, I see that there needs to be a little bit more dark. So let's take this brush. Actually, let's make another little value here. Oof, that's really dark. So I'll add some more burnt umber just to lighten that up. And yeah, there needs to be a little more dark here. Yep, a little more dark there. Okay, so back to that brush that I was using to subtract here. All right, so this might have to come in a little bit more like that. And while I'm doing this, is creating a nice, um, I want to say a nice soft edge here for the, uh, oof, what's that called? Uh, help me out here. I think that's called a widow's peak. Don't know. I used to watch this uh, show on Cartoon Network. There was this character named Vegeta, Vegeta or something like that, and he had this pretty cool looking uh, shape on his hairline. I always thought this was pretty cool. I wish I had that. That'd be so cool. Alright, so this comes up a little bit more. There we go. Just paying attention to the shapes there. Neat. Alright, so with the palette knife, I'm going to try and mix that so it looks like it's Similar to this, very similar, so let's start with that. So burnt umber, titanium white. Burnt umber, titanium white. S standing back, that value is definitely darker than this value. So there will be more burnt umber into this mixture. And uh, let's just use the palette knife to kind of compare that value. It looks like it needs to be even darker. Mixing a little bit more with the palette knife. All right, what's this tone looking like? That looks closer. Just comparing this value to the value on the shirt. Now the difference is that this is cooler. So before I go into my ultramarine blue, I'm going to use ivory black. Ivory black is a very nice coolant. So now. I have the ivory black and I want to raise the value a little bit but not that much. 
So what am I going to do? Some of you might know. I'm going to use flake instead of titanium. Nice. Using the flake white is helping me bring the value up, but not that much. And then now some of you could say, well, why don't you just use a tiny bit of titanium white? I could. I could. But um, I wanted more paint into this mixture, so that's why I'm using the flake. All right, now, temperature-wise, might be good. Yup, let's use the palette knife. Let's see. Palette knife into hair. Yes, I think I can do. Put into portrait. Oof, yeah, you gotta let me practice for that. Okay, so this comes down. I think that's good. I'm gonna use... That same brush, if I can find it, that same brush that I was using to subtract that and just add this, just like that. Just add this lighter tone. Very nice. And um, I'm gonna stand back. Yeah, that, look, that looks about, that looks art. This comes back here. Now I'm gonna switch back to this dark brush. And uh, there's a little bit of a dark tone here, so I'm going to use what's on the canvas to mix in. So I'm working back and forth between these brushes, just like that, to create this edge. And there you have it. Now let's look at some of the even smaller shapes. So I'm gonna switch back to um, I'm gonna switch back to a little tiny size. What is this? Two round brush, the green brush. Um, as some of you know, the green brush is my favorite brush. This is the one that I've been using for so long, and I really love using it, and I'll still keep using it. But I have a new one. This is a new one. So let's use it. I like to use rounds when I get into smaller and more specific shapes such as this. And the reason I like to use round brushes is because I can get a very nice fine point with it. And it feels almost like I'm using, um, almost like I'm using a graphite pencil or a sharpened point to uh, some charcoal. All right, so let's get a little darker value here. Now we're gonna have the wing of the nose wing of the nose right there without cleaning the brush let's get into a lighter value let's get into this lighter value here we have the wing of the nose a little bit more light for the wing of the nose and um, so the bulb of the nose looks a little bit closer to the yellowish side and it's a warm yellowish side so let's use this one there we go. And that's for the bulb of the nose. All right, so now there's a very distinct shape here. So let's use again this little lighter region of the palette. Very distinct shape here. And I think that might need to calm down a little bit. So back to this brush here. Let's just take some of this right off. Push it down. Let's go ahead and push it down. Something like that. And let's use my favorite brush, the original. And just push this down. Let's even push down. Let's create an even bigger shape than we need. And then we'll, of course, cut back into that. All right, back to the newer version of my favorite brush. Okay, very close edge there. Gonna use my hand here for a support. There. Somewhat like that. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in uh, the light highlight. Use my hand for support again. 
highlight. Let's take this light. This is plain here, it's pretty flat. Have I mentioned the word plain yet? I'm not sure, but uh, a plane is a three-dimensional concept or conceptual construct, whatever you want to say, of a flat surface in space. And that's it. That's a plane change, plane change, plane change, plane change. The more plane changes you put in, the more volume you will have in your painting. That simple. But then, of course, within the plane changes, you have edges. And so that's another reason why I like to use kind of like soft synthetic brushes. Um, and that's just because I can make very soft edges with them. And with portraiture, you do want to stay kind of soft. On the softer side with the edges, there is a time for sharp edges within the portrait, such as that. Uh, that was on purpose. I made that sharp on purpose. I made this soft on purpose. I would rather this edge be soft, this one be sharp. Now then, after standing back, I uh, see a little drawing mishap here, which is all right. And I think that this needs to come down a little bit. So again, I like to turn my brush to a little point like this. Simple little point. That's why I like one reason I like rounds. So let's turn that over. There we go. Goes down a little bit more. A little more. Yeah, somewhat like that. Somewhat like that. Gonna use the fan brush. Alright. So let's add a little bit of. Hmm, should we work here or here? Eh, let's work here. Let's work there. So switching back to, uh, let's use a clean brush. Let's use this one. This plane is definitely lighter and I'm gonna look at this plane in relation to this plane. I'm gonna stand back, whoops, this is too light for that. Oh no, what are we gonna do? Go back to the palette knife, titanium white, burnt umber. Titanium white burnt umber. Let's just go ahead and make it darker. Let's leave some of these areas lighter. So it's very useful to compare your shapes to one another. Now I know I did make this judgment call based on this, so I will reevaluate that shape uh, when the time comes, if the time comes. So a little darker, yeah, that's a little better. And while I'm at it, while I'm at it, um, the brush that I use for the background, uh, so ivory black, ultramarine, burnt umber, so while I'm at it, this comes down. Let's create some nice little painterly effects while we do that. A little bit more burnt umber. So again, um, my philosophy is we make mistakes. Mistakes happen. Mistakes are natural occurrences and especially in painting think about a mistake as a stepping stone to success. This comes down like that and then while we're at it let's go ahead and cover the rest of this. Yep, let's cover it. Alright, um, fan brush. Eliminate some glare, please. All right, we're eliminating a little bit of glare. So now I made that dark. That still uh, needs to get darker. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Mixing right onto the painting. Let's leave these areas lighter, just for fun. And again, Push that over. Yep. Okay. So what were we looking at? I kind of just forgot. Okay. So we were working here. Now this in relation to this, this is lighter. And um, let's go ahead into the colors that we mixed. And look at that. Now we're really getting some form. Yep. Just 
starting to look like farm now. And this area is receiving much more light than this area. But this area still needs to be receiving some light. I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm going to go ahead and look at another area that needs attention. Here, let's look at the mouth. Switching back to the smaller brush, uh, I see that I need uh, some light on the lower lip. So let's go into the middle region of the palette. A little bit of a lizard permanent. Just a little bit of a lizard permanent into that. And hmm, let's say it goes about there. Why not? If we're wrong, if we are wrong, we're wrong. And we'll just adjust it. Brave brushing it. Brave brush it. Back to the dark brush. This comes out about like that. Yep. Something like that. And I tell you what, I'm gonna use a different brush and make a little scale. I uh, just made it backwards, so I'm gonna use my palette knife. Take that out. Get out of here. Okay. Make a little scale. So let's take a tiny bit of clean titanium white. Let's make a little value scale for the reds. Red value scale. Then add some, for the darks I'm going to use ivory black and ultramarine blue, back to the alizarin, yep, just like that, back to the old, okay, back to the ivory black, alizarin permanent, remember alizarin permanent is very nice to tint something reddish, especially in the darks. You want to be sneaky and add some color in the darks. Use your alizarin permanent for that. All right, to the alizarin permanent. Now let's be sneaky. Add a little bit of warmth into the dark shapes here. All right, so this. Let's look at the shape first. This oof, needs to come out a little further. So let's do that. Push it a little bit further. Yep, like that. And I'm looking at this distance out here in relation to the corner of the nose. That's how I'm making that judgment call. What you do to one side of the portrait you want to do to the other. So let's look at the other side. This comes out. Yep, it does. It's also darker and... well, it's darker and cooler on the side of the uh, mustache, so... Let's use some ultramarine blue, ivory black, a little bit of burnt umber. Yep, just that. Strong contrast between light and dark, that's what we want. Strong contrast. Yep, that's strong. Very strong contrast. Okay, so back to the little value scale that I made for the reds. I'm going to clean off this brush with some odorless center. Very simple. Clean off the brush, okay, back, we're back. So, all right, um, there's a little bit of dark warm here. And I'm letting the color on the brush mix with the burnt umber on the painting. And the reason I'm doing that is because he doesn't have hot pink lips. That's the only reason. Back to this dark here. And we have a dark right there. I tell you what, it's just as important to know what you're putting in as it is what you're leaving out. And some may say it's more important to know what you can and should leave out. Um, go figure, whichever you want to think of. Um, but I'm trying to basically paint in what I see at a glance. And uh, just glancing back and forth to get the information I need. So a little bit of light. Now my fear is that this distance might be too small. And if it is, the whole painting is ruined. Not really. 
Uh, let's, so let's take a little bit more light and just push it up. I'm gonna push this up. Push this up. Still trying to keep that edge rather sharp. Just like that. Okay, I'm now gonna go back into this shadow. Push this down. I'm trying to pay attention to the shape. There. There. Something like that. Remember, mistakes are stepping stones to success, especially in painting. Now let's get some bright red from there. Mix onto here. So I see that I need a little bit more of it. Right about there. And that's still too hot pink. So let's just take from this and just let let the colors mix on the painting. Yep, we're mixing on the painting. We can do that. And this is why I like to use a little round brush. This is probably a size one round. Smaller brushes give you lots of control. Large brushes allow you to cover things and um, inevitably large, large brushes allow you to put in less detail. So that's one reason a lot of folks uh, tend to say stick with big brushes and use a bigger brush than you need to. And that's because they want you to put in less detail than you need to, that's why. But once you understand that, um, you can use smaller brushes all you want. All right, comes down to about there. Now we're starting to get a mouth, but there needs to be a little pathway here uh, from the bottom of the orbicularis oris going right down into uh, the shape of the mouth. Uh, so the brush that I use for the pinkish colors I'm not going to clean it, I'm just going to use what's on it and uh, paint this in. And I'm working right on top of the burnt umber uh, because I want the color from my palette here to be neutralized with the uh, burnt umber. Yep, and that's it. There we go, just painting in that lighter plane. Now you can see the mouth is starting to take form. Now I'm going to switch back to hmm, what I'm going to use. I'm going to switch back to my favorite brush, but the newer version of it, and it's uh, pretty light. So what I'm going to do is take what's on it. So I think there's a pink on it or something. So I'm going to take uh, some of the paint that's already on here. Just push that shape up. And so I'm allowing it to mix with, with what's on the painting to create this shape. Now I'm paying attention to this shape here, this little light shape. Yeah, I'm paying attention to the negative shape there. So let's take some of this, just a little touch of that. Not, I don't need much. And there you have it. We're going to put in some fine little details for the shape of the mustache. Yep, comes out to about there. Let's take some more of this dark. And it's a cooler color. So I'm also contrasting warm and cool. Yep, just like that. So let's go ahead and uh, look at this tone here. Oof, that's way too blue. So let's just take some of what's on the palette. Yep, just like that. And that shape comes down to about there. Okay, let's take some more cool color. Comes down to about there. And so, uh, tell you what, there's a little bit of light. So let's take some flake. There's a little bit of light showing through here and I need it to help contrast this edge. Uh, let's just take some of that. That edge there. Yeah, mm, I need to make that edge a little more specific now. Taking what's on the palette, push that up. All right, a little bit of lost information there. Something's not working, it's okay. So let's just use burnt umber 
and the titanium white. Oof, a little bit more burnt umber. There we go. Okay, so this is closer to the tone that I want for this shape. And I'm just trying to work out this edge here. That's all I'm trying to do. So that comes out to about there. Hmm. Now, switching back to the dark brush. Let's take some of this. There. Now, hmm. A little bit more of this is coming out. But I think what it might be is that this shape still isn't quite right. So, let's take ivory black, ultramarine blue, and we ran out of burnt umber. Don't worry, I have the burnt umber on hand. And there we go, more burnt umber. All right, so let's put some more burnt umber into this. Now then, let's look at this shape. So yes, I am pushing the dark in the background, darker than I see it. Um, and that's because I'm trying to use uh, light and dark, so chiaroscuro, and forgive me if I can't pronounce it right. I probably I'm not pronouncing it right. Comes down like this. It's a little closer. Mm, still could use some adjusting, but remember, I'm not trying to create a perfect copy of what I'm looking at. Rather, I'm trying to interpret. Uh, so while we're doing that. Let's go ahead, let's take that color again and just re-establish that edge. I want this to be sharp, this to be a little bit softer and a little bit softer there, so that I pull focus towards the eyes and the nose. Now notice uh, off with his ear, I chopped off his ear again, and that's okay. I'm going to come back in with this little dark here. Let's just take from the darker red, right above, right above the eyebrow. There. Let's use the fan brush. So I'm going to put in first the dark underneath of the helix of the ear. Then I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to have to clean this brush now. So I'm going to clean it with a little bit of odorless mineral spirits and some vapor towel. Okay. As clean as I could make it. And let's take a little bit of this paint and mix it with this paint. And a little bit of light for the ear. There we have a little bit of the helix of the ear showing. Let's use some flake white because I need it to be brighter and I don't want to have, and I want to have more paint and I want to make it brighter, so that's why I'm using the flake. All right. Single brush stroke time. Perhaps, perhaps not, I don't know. So let's add a little bit more pink. And uh, right there, yeah, that's a little better. But I still want to adjust that shape. This little shape for the ear cuts in about like that. And, and brush. To eliminate glare. Now let's go back into the eyes. Notice how we're working all around. Working all around. So I'm gonna clean off my dark brush with the odorless mineral spirits. Odorless mineral spirits to clean off the brush. Uh, back into these dark shapes. So let's add some burnt umber. Burnt umber, ultramarine blue. Burnt Umber Ultramarine Blue. I just want a very dark, dark. Okay. Very definitive shape here. And I gotta squint down to see it. Very hard to see. Now here is where it's very important to know what to put in, what not to put in, because I don't see that much in the shape here. But this is the concavity of the eye socket. And I am missing a little bit, so let's Get a little awkward here and push this brush stroke out. There we go. I could just go up like this. There we go. I think that's a little closer to the shape that I need. Just a 
little bit closer. Now this might need to come up. Come on, there you go. It's a little closer. Expand brush. Kind of squint down. Okay. Now this shape needs to be a little further out there. Go somewhat like that. Now let's go ahead and uh, look at the other side. So what's going on with the other side? Needs to be a little darker. Let's push this out. Yeah, something out like that. Okay. Now. Hmm. Uh, let's push this out here. And there's a little bit of a little poof, like swooping motion that the eyebrow's making. Swoop, there we go. All right, now to the fan brush. All right, let's take a look at that. See, that's coming down a little bit too much or this is going up a little bit too much, probably a combination of the two. So I'm gonna clean the brush with just paper towel. No mineral spirits, paper towel. Let's go back into this little region. And let's go and put down uh, this shape right here. Mm. A little darker. And this is being casted down from the lower eyelid. Just a little shape for that. Mm. This cuts in a little more actually. Yep. A little further in there. Fan brush. Alright, that looks a little better. So, now I'm going to go ahead and look at this. I'm going to use a horizontal. Could be that this needs to angle a little more. Okay. Angle a little more. Come on, you can do it. There. And while we're at it, wrong brush. While we're at it, this plane changes not really reading. So I'm going to switch back to my favorite brush, but the newer version of it. Still uh, not using any medium. I don't know if I will use medium actually. All right, let's just make this transition a little bit more evident. There we go. Yep, something like that. After standing back, I see that, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I'm squinting and I think it could go up a little bit more, tiny bit. So let's take some of this and push it up. There you, there you go. <clears throat> Pushing that up, just like that. All right, that. That uh, shadow shape needs some work. So let's go ahead with the burnt umber, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is a nice way to lighten up the value uh, of a dark without using white. All right, so let's go ahead and push this darker first, pushing it darker, adding even more contrast. And hey, uh, let's do that across all of this now. More burn over. Ultramarine blue. See, I get distracted. I'm working on one shape and then I see something that needs to be done on another area. Um, it's okay. It's alright to get distracted every, every once in a while. Alright. A little bit more dark right there. Shouldn't hurt. Back to the fan brush. Okay. Oops, took some of the light there. 
that's all right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is add a little bit more dark here. See that? I'm getting distracted again. What's going on with me? Okay, this shape, I'm gonna have to go back and forth between brushes to figure out that shape. So here's how I'm gonna do it. So to the burnt umber, to the burnt umber, a little bit of yellow ochre. Need another brush that's comparable to this one. Okay, let's take this. Burnt Umber, Cadmium Red, Yellow Ochre, and I'm gonna push this dark light a little bit warmer. So, just comparing these two colors uh, side by side on the palette first. Okay, making the transition on my palette first, and this is why. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that up, just like that. Single brush stroke time. And with the other brush, I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. Just like that. Double brush stroke time. Gonna use the fan brush. And now you see we're starting to have a transition, a much more smooth transition. So let's do that again. And just with the just with this brush right now. Fan brush. And this is how we're gonna paint the transitioning tone. Again, this is a very important transition of value because it gives us the curvature of the form here. Very important value transition. Now then, I'm gonna actually make it a little bit cooler. So let's just take some of this, mix right onto that. A little bit of this into a little bit of that. Okay, so first let's take this shadow color, push it up here, and remember we're seeing a little bit of the uh, we're seeing a little bit of the zygomatic bone peeking out right about there. So let's put that in there. Okay, fan brush. There you have it. Now there's a little bit more of a swooping motion rather than just flat. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the fan, or sorry, the shadow brush, but just kind of patting it in this direction. To give us that little swoop. Back to the fan brush. Okay, so now with the fan brush alone, I'm going to just soften this edge if possible. Just tapping on it. Tap, 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 tap. Softening that. Fan brush. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and with my favorite brush again, let's just take some more pink, some more warmth, and uh, just put in this plane. Needs to be darker. A little darker. Okay, so let's add that on there. Yep, so it's giving us this plane change. Hopefully, it might not be giving us anything, but let's see what happens. All right, so now as I'm putting this in, I'm gonna stand back and look at the big picture. Okay, so I'm gonna do something drastic. I really want there to be a strong contrast between light and dark in this painting. So I'm going to add a little bit of, just a tiny bit, of my cadmium red into this light. And drum roll. Let there be light. A little bit of light on the forehead. Now let's put some of that paint back. Dangerous, dangerous stuff here. So put some of it back onto the palette. Now we're gonna take a clean brush. If I even have one. So a clean brush. And just uh, work this edge. Just want this edge to be very soft edge. Yep, very, very soft. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of mix it 
with the brush onto the surface, lightly tapping it on here, letting the color sprinkle down, almost like snowflakes falling down. And yes, it is snowing. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's snowing where I live, so kind of imagining it like snowflakes falling down. Just spreading it, spreading it. Trying to soften this edge. Is it soft enough? I hope so. Now the reason I'm softening this edge so much is because the hairline is usually one of the softest edges um, on the form of the portrait. And um, if it's not soft, um, that's how you can get a very strange effects. And I'll be specific. If it's too sharp, it looks like a wig is on his head. Basically. Okay, so I'm just spreading the paint there. Very nice and soft. Spread some of it even here. Just a little bit though. And then, uh, I'm actually, I actually noticed something. Something. Uh, I think it's a vein over here. This dark shape, not sure what it is. Uh, could be, maybe it's just a uh, temporal, a temple, temporal parietal region of the skull that's showing through. But uh, do you see it? There's a little dark here. Let's go ahead very gently now. Just whispering the paint on. And again, I'm not trying to copy what I'm looking at. I'm trying to make a painting. Okay, a little bit darker there. Yep, a little darker. And then after placing that, uh, I see that there's still a lighter plane there that I haven't quite fully described. So, let's add that plane change. All right. Trying to contrast our strong shapes of light and dark. There you have it. Very strong plane change. Actually, that's more of a soft plane change, but nonetheless, I'm trying to put in this plane change. Just softening, softening it. Yep. Somewhat like that. Okay. And now this whole shape here is actually a lighter plane that I'm kind of, uh, I kind of forgot. So let's go ahead and uh, make that lighter. This needs to have a top plane, so let's take from here. Oof, but it's not that bright, so I'm actually going to ignore it. Remember, it's important to know what to put in what not to put in. Yep, just putting that in there. Fan brush. Now we're going to need some information for that. So what I'm going to do, take another clean brush. Alright, just subtract a little bit. Okay, just a little bit of light showing there. Don't need much there. Don't want much there e either, so. Okay, fan brush. Now back to this dark, dark. We're going to have a little glimpse of dark there. Yep, just about that. So let's go ahead and put in some more stuff here for the shirt. I'm going to use the same brush without cleaning it. Uh, Alright, so some of the titanium white, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Whoops, got some of the pink in there, but that's okay. That's okay. Ultramarine blue. Alright, it needs to be a little darker, more ultramarine blue, a little bit of ivory black. There's a little glimpse of the shirt showing here somewhere. Mm. Let me go in with the dark brush first. Somewhat like that. So there's a little glimpse of the shirt showing here. Yep, a little glimpse of it showing right there. And this actually cuts in a little more. Like 
that somewhat like that. Okay. All right. So that's the shirt. Now let's go back to the palette knife. Let's just take what's on here. Mix it right onto this our number. Let's get that collar in there. Let's try to do it with a single palette mark. Whoa. Nope, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. It's okay. Come back in. Whoops, got a little bit of light in there. That's all right. Spread it through. There we go. Tell you what, palette knife is a lot more fun than I thought it'd be. So let's take in some of these darks. Just a little glimpse of dark here, so burnt umber. Uh, Alright, so a little bit of burnt umber. Let's put that in there. Just a little glimpse of it. I'm going to use a little bit of medium. And, um, my medium is Neo McGill, just to thin out the paint a little bit. The idea is that thinner paint will stick onto thicker paint. So thinner paint will stick onto thicker paint. Let's test that theory. Yep. Just like that. Very simple. Let's go ahead and just adjust that shape a little bit. There you go. I'm going to use the fan brush to knock out some of the glare. Okay, so same deal. I'm going to put in that shadow there. Ivory black, burnt umber, ultramarine, a little bit of neo McGilp, and, and, okay. All right, the shape is going to come right out here. Didn't quite work out so well. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to use the palette knife. There's just way too much paint there for this to stick. So subtracting some paint. Let's try that again. So back to the ultramarine blue, burnt umber, ivory black, a little bit of neon McGilp. Try that again. There you have it. Very simple little dark shape there. This goes out even a bit out there. Okay, back to the fan brush. Let's just eliminate the glare where possible. Okay, so now let's go back into this region. So let's just make this shape a little bit more specific. Let's just have a little tiny glimpse of light showing there. The magic of chiaroscura or light and dark. You can have just a little tiny bit of light showing and it can tell so much. Hopefully. Okay. I just uh, eliminate the glare there and have that dark come all the way up here. A little bit more ivory black, lazarin, hermit. Paint that in there, just like that. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, just a little touch here for the ear. Now, first thing I'm going to do is off with the ear. Or, hey, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe that's all right. Maybe that's how I want to leave it. Yeah. Let's just leave it like that. Alright, I'm going to stand back, now I'm going to cut in a little bit, so let's add some ultramarine blue, let's cut that in a little bit more, yep, like that, back to the fan brush. Just eliminate some glare there. All right, so I'm gonna say I think that's about it. 
I'd like to thank you so much for watching this week's portrait painting demonstration. I know it's a little bit uh, different tone here, so you're going to have all of the footage. So I ran through the entire thing from start to finish, no cuts. So you have the entire footage. So this is a one hour, 30 minute special. I hope you enjoy. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one.